uh, is uh, breathtaking. So at the, uh, the present time, the, the, the uh, amount of bad debts that these international banks have put in is an incredible 75 billion euro, which would be 100 billion Canadian dollars, uh, roughly. And that burden has now been moved wholly onto the shoulders of the Irish uh, working class. And it, it's an incredible, uh, breathtaking reality of what, what, what happened. These were private loans by private bankers and speculators into private banks in Ireland to lend to private developers in Ireland for property speculation in the Irish uh, property bubble. Uh, which incidentally increased the price of a home for an ordinary worker fourfold in the course of 10 years. That's the type of speculation and profiteering that was going on. But incredibly, in September of 2008, at a midnight meeting, and I mean literally at midnight and into the early hours, the Prime Minister, the Minister for Finance, and the most senior private bankers met in government buildings and the government gave a guarantee that they would underwrite the debts, the bad gambling debts of, uh, of all the, uh, the, the banks and transferred that burden then onto the shoulders of the working class and began this massive program of austerity to uh, force the working class to pay for this crisis so that in in the time since, public sector workers, for example, have had their, their wage cut by 20%, which are massive, savage cuts. Uh, private sector workers, similarly, with tax increases and so on, cuts in benefit for the unemployed, a tax on the disabled people's uh, pension, and, uh, and uh, so forth, uh, which inevitably, of course, caused further crisis in the economy by cutting the market. So a rocketing unemployment crisis and a rocketing deficit crisis as well to such an extent that in November of this year, just gone, 2010, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, the European Union, uh, a bureaucracy and the European Central Bank arrived in Dublin uh, to bail out Irish uh, capitalism by giving uh, uh, massive loans, not grants, and then laying down an absolutely dictatorial regime of cuts, privatisation, and a detailed programme that the Irish government uh, uh, of, of the time committed uh, itself to. And the memorandum of understanding between the Irish government and the, uh, the EU IMF is really breathtaking. Every three months, these officials come uh, from the IMF and the EU to look at the books to see if the cuts are being made, if the privatizations are being pushed ahead, etc., and then to give their verdict on whether that's happening or not. It's, uh, it's an economic <coughs> dictatorship in, in, uh, in uh, reality. Now, of course, uh, as we predicted, the savage austerity is causing huge deflation. Unemployment is, uh, has uh, rocketed. Tens of thousands of young people are forced out of the country in emigration. I have no doubt that you'll be meeting some of them in Canada mm -hmm. over the next uh, uh, period of time. Private investment has uh, collapsed to uh, dramatically uh, low uh, levels. And I Ireland, of course, is a small country. We have four and a half million people, M maybe two, just under two million workers who are carrying this gigantic burden. And, and if you do the simple math, say by 2013, two years from now, if you divide the banking debt and then the other government national debts, you would get roughly, in Canadian dollars, I work it out at $160,000 per worker. The average industrial wage is about 40000 Canadian dollars a year before tax deductions. So you can see that it's absolutely impossible for the Irish working class. They could make outright slaves of our people. And it would be utterly impossible to meet this level of debt. So there is a huge crisis coming down the line. There is no question uh, uh, about this. And in two or three years, there will most likely be a default of uh, some kind as far as Ireland is concerned. The same thing that has now been spoken about 
um, for, the, for Greece, which is uh, also in a huge crisis. Now, the role of the IMF and the, the, the EU and the European Central Bank has simply been at all costs to protect the major European banks to try and prevent a massive crisis in the European financial system. Because of the level of, uh, of, 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 bad, uh, of gambling debts, um, if the Irish didn't pay that, it would uh, cause a massive crisis within, uh, within European banking. And they are prepared to drive the Irish working class living standards down, 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 and to crush services and crush so many aspects of our uh, society in order to protect the, uh, the uh, European uh, financial uh, system. And what they have stood over or, or stood against especially is what we, the term we use to burn the bondholders which has been uh, a key demand of the Socialist Party on the left in the election campaign, for example, we say that the working class should not pay a cent of these gambling debts. We have no responsibility f for them whatsoever, and they should, we should just refuse uh, to pay. And the, uh, the, 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 the EU in particular, and the, the, which is the U European capitalism, if you like, but we just heard uh, recently um, a, a rumour that hasn't been denied that Timothy Geithner, the uh, financial secretary in the United States, absolutely vetoed the idea that the bondholders in, in the Irish banks uh, should be burned. Um, uh, so you see, it's, it's, it's a, it, this is the protection of the, uh, the monetary system internationally at the expense of the, uh, of, of the uh, working class. Now, the response of the Socialist Party and of the left has been, not a cent in, in the bad debts, nationalise the banks, but with democratic control, not to, to bail them out, as they have nationalised a, a number of them just for that reason, but to make them major vehicles of investment for public investment with public funds for massive infrastructural programmes that will put tens of thousands of people to work on very necessary infrastructural and, and uh, service programs in our, uh, in our uh, society. Now, of course, the crisis of leadership that we have seen in, the, in, the, uh, in, in Europe, where there has been no concerted alternative whatsoever uh, in response to, uh, to, 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 to this, is a crisis that extends very much into the trade unions um, uh, uh, as well. And the leadership of the European trade union movement has shown itself utterly incapable of giving any lead uh, in, 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 in response to this uh, crisis. And what's clear is, having no alternative to neoliberalism and to capitalism, then they have capitulated ideologically and mentally in front of that, and then they are absolutely helpless. Uh, uh, reduced into just shrugging their shoulders and saying what 